Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn and I teach soil microbiology and organic waste management at Sultan Qaboos University in Oman, in Muscat, Oman, in the College of Agriculture and Marine Sciences. Next semester, I want to give my students uh, warm farming assignments and uh, practicals and uh, I'm preparing for that and trying to make some warm farming myself to be able to teach the students some of that and uh, I today I will tell you a little bit uh, how, how my experience in start, starting warm farming in Oman uh, is going on and uh, what, uh, what is the progress and what I've been able to do so far. So I have four worms that I, uh, three that I isolated here in, in, in Oman and uh, the fourth one I bought. There is a fifth one that's, that is gonna arrive soon and I'm gonna tell you about that. So the first one I isolated from my front garden. This is a public area and I start poking around in the soil and digging and extracting some of the worms. This is all, these worms are very adapted for the heat. They survive the summer here with over 45 degrees Celsius. And I hope that they will be able to do some ex, uh, outside worm composting with these worms. Uh, here is the box that I set up with them uh, one and a half month ago. And I will show for you how they look, what they look like here. Uh, they're quite big worms, over 20 centimeters big. Uh, and uh, first thing I can tell you is that I, I expect to have more than one type of worm in this box. Uh, uh, and namely, I, I can identify two different uh, uh, by color and, and, and shape. But this is uh, usually the most predominant what they look like. They have a very bulging clitellum. They're very large. Um, they are very active. Uh, and they eat the organic matter really quick. This, this box was set up about one and a half month ago with uh, pit moss and cardboard and uh, goat manure. And these, uh, everything I add to them, they eat, uh, quickly eat. The density is quite high at the moment, perhaps uh, over 100 uh, worms in this uh, box, but 100 worms of such a big worm is quite a high density for this uh, small box. And they, they seem to be doing quite well. They tolerate uh, in, in the, uh, this uh, decomposing organic matter conditions. And they seem to even be driven and, and go and feed on them, especially if you add a rest of avocados or uh, melons or watermelon. You can see a cocoon here uh, on, on the center left. Uh, of these worms, they are doing well so far, and I, I want to test them in um, uh, kitchen waste, uh, home uh, composting for uh, outside conditions in Oman. If they are able to survive the summer, I'll be very happy and try to propagate that and and, uh, and try to uh, push that forward among my colleagues as a as a way of. Uh, recycling organic waste from from uh, uh, domestic environments uh, here in this uh, Omani conditions. But uh, there are other ones we can do it indoors. Uh, and uh, I will show you some of the things I isolated so far. Uh, the, in, in this plant I have indoors, I've uh, isolated one very small worm. Uh, this, uh, this plant is probably coming from uh, India because of it's an Indian supermarket where I bought it. And in the substrate, it, it came with some worms. Uh, and these worms are really doing well in the pot. I've been trying to feed them in the pot coffee and crushed barley. And they, are, they seem to never uh, be able to end propagating here. There's a lot of baby worms coming out. And I can every week come by and harvest uh, a, a new bunch of worms there. I will show you how they look like. This box is over a month old. And I feed them coffee and crushed barley as and some kitchen waste, like here's a watermelon that I had yesterday. Uh, still, there's some fruit fly problems that I need to address by adding more paper and cardboard on the top. Uh, here's what it looks like. It's a small worm. Uh, the, the biggest I've got is it's still below five centimeters. Uh, and this, they have a yellow tail, which is a clear sign of Isenia fetida. But when I try to count the segments until the clitellum and uh, the segments until the male pore, it seems not to be Isenia fetida because uh, male pores seems like to be over 20 segments away from the head. And um, 
the 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 clitellum starts over uh, like 34 segments from the head whereas uh, for a senior fatty that seems to be uh, closer to 20 26 or 27 uh, and and um, I will I will do the classification of these worms later on with a, with a proper key and uh, uh, using a microscope and I will I will share this with you guys but so far they are propagating really quick a few worms from the from the the that pot and now they, they become hundreds uh, within a month there's loads of cocoons we can we can see on this substrate it's a, a quite a prolific worm they, they multiply multiplies very quickly also in the same box coming from the same pot we can we can uh, uh, identify there's loads of uh, uh, um, uh, pot worms the white ones very small white ones the erichidra um, worms and uh, i will also uh, do the classification. The, the classification I will do these worms both both morphologically and uh, by sequencing the the um, uh, the um, cytochrome oxidase gene from the mitochondria. I will uh, uh, purify DNA from uh, isolate and purify DNA from these worms and uh, send it for amplify the the cytochrome oxidase gene and send for sequencing. So we know for sure what type of worms there are, there are. Uh, just by looking around on the on the database NCBI database, there's not much done in genomics for earthworms, so uh, it will be challenged now. So due to the lack of uh, current work done in genomics for earthworms, but we can certainly try to push that forward. Yeah, this in this plant here, I isolated in my garden another uh, another strain of uh, worms, and these worms they seem to have died during the summer. And now that it's cooled down, now it's autumn in, in Oman and we have temperatures around 25, they seem to have eclosed from the, the cocoons and there's loads of baby worms on that pot and I picked some, some up and transferred for this uh, pan to help them propagate in, in composting environment with the same substrate that I was telling you before, peat moss, uh, goat manure and cardboard. And this is what they look like when they get a little bit more mature. I will try to identify them and tell you guys what they are. But they, they seem to uh, withstand outside conditions uh, uh, in a sense that they, they, uh, they, they, they survive as cocoons, but they don't survive as worms. Yeah? They're not adult uh, worms that, that are surviving, just the, just the cocoons. And then when it comes the the, the fall and they, they are able to um, eclode and colonize again the substrate. So I will see what they are. Uh, I will show you the last worm I got here is the this worm I've, I've got is uh, one that I bought from New Delhi, India. And this is uh, a Senia Andre worm. Uh, they arrived about one and a half week ago and they're starting to hatch. And there's loads of baby worms coming out. Uh, some of them you're just eclosing. Some of them they are like a week old. And um, when they also are big enough, I will try. I will do the the um, identification process and try to to see. Here I will show you like a piece of uh, watermelon. Uh, and it's really say, hard to say if there's some of these are maggots or uh, baby worms. The bigger ones for sure, baby worms. But um, uh, there are some of them when they when they get a few days old, it's very clear when they are worms or not. Um, I will uh, in in a bit you will see one of uh, uh, one baby worm that is perhaps a week old, and it will be much clearer. But they are, I bought them as um, as a, a vermicompost uh, worm compost from uh, a worm farm in New Delhi, India. And they come with loads of cocoons, and they are, some of these cocoons are eclosing, and I've been able to culture them. Uh, this is a very good view of uh, one of the baby worms that's already one week old. And um, hopefully, uh, I can able, I'll be able to propagate them enough and have some, some uh, good amount of worms to share with my students to do some of their work. All right, so this is what I have to bring for you today and uh, to share a little bit of my experience of starting some worm farming in Omani conditions, Omani farming uh, uh, conditions. And um, 
I will I will keep you posted on the next next steps and the things I have, I've been able to accomplish or not during this uh, challenging uh, activity for for this uh, arid climates. But the, the, also I feel that there is a lot of potential for recycling of home organic waste using uh, uh, earthworms or, uh, or compost worms. And uh, hopefully there is a, a possibility to do this also in this uh, hot climate that we have here. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.